John David Kent got his start in professional music at an early age. By the time he was 14, he was touring the world, even appearing on Letterman and Conan, and scored his first major label deal just two years later. With his latest band, he put out his first full-length album as frontman on his very own independent label. Propelled by three top 20 singles on the Texas country charts, he's working with 30 Tigers to distribute his sophomore project Before the Sun Comes Up, which is also on his own label. Kelly Lynn caught up with JDK at the basement here in Nashville to hear about his new music. Catching up with John David Kent. How are you? It's good. so good to see you. It's very nice to see you too. So you've been busy before the sun comes up. Yes. Album out and ready. Yeah, it came out last Tuesday and this, these past two weeks are just a total whirlwind from all the stuff that we've had to do. But it's great. I'm, I'm super excited to, to have the, the energy around it. Absolutely. I'll talk a little bit about your story because you are no stranger to being out and touring. You started when you were like, was it 14 or yeah. how young were you? Uh, I was 16 when I started touring uh, with a band called Radish. Uh, ben Queller was the lead singer. And we toured all over the world. We had a top 40 single in Europe and came back to the States and made another album. And I came back to Texas where I'm from and started a recording studio and a record label. And then just this kind of came out of that. There you just go. Very, you know, a very natural, organic, uh, full circle, I guess you could call it. Just felt like it was the time. But now yeah. this music, your band earlier was what? It was a different genre yeah, a little I mean, bit, huh? Yeah, it was, it was grunge. It was sort of post-Nirvana grunge rock. Gotcha. Yeah. And this is country? With yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely country. But it, it, it has an edge and an energy to it. And, you know, I, I, I grew up listening to so much music. My parents, huge music fans. And it wasn't presented to me in a, well, this is country or this is rock. Right. Or this, it was just yeah. like, hey, this is a great song, which is kind of what it was all about, you know, good songs. And so to me, it's, that's the way I want to make music, too. I want it to just be what it is. There's nothing for us at the end of this road, baby. Should have just let me go. What do you hope to accomplish in the album? What are you trying to give the fans? Well, I just, I want to keep growing our fan base and expand, um, you know, nationally and, and even internationally. We went to Europe this past summer and uh, I love it over there. I, you know, the fans are great over there. They love country music. They love American music. So I definitely hope to get back over there this next year and, um, you know, just continue to, to expand and grow the fan base. Here we are again, calling me up and letting me in. Every time we're together, another bridge burns, you think by now we both burn. Got the pedal down as far as it'll go, LA freeway on our radio. The summer sun and the wind in our hair don't know where we're going, just take us there. Track nine is called Free to Drive, and it's just, it's really personal and super autobiographical. Um, and I really like the way that one turned out. And that was one that I would have gone down swinging to have put on the album, you know. And it's what's like it one. about? It's, a it's about growing up and, and getting your license and getting your first car and just those things. You know, you always, whether your car was a beater or whether it was great, you remember that experience and the freedom that you get with being able to drive yourself, you know, and the memories you make with your friends and the songs that were on the radio during that time. And it's kind of about that. Take a step, cause it was you sitting next to me. You had your bare feet hanging out the window, had the pedal to the metal, we were going nowhere. Talk a little bit about your label. You said you have a label and a studio at home. Yeah. So you also are recording a lot of Texas acts? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was engineering and producing when I wasn't out on the road. And when Radish made our second album, that's when I got really interested and intrigued in the whole process of making albums, you know, uh, recording them, engineering, producing, all that, the technical stuff. And so that's when I built the studio and started producing and, and learning that trade. And then, um, when I decided to not tour, uh, that's when I started a record label. We signed a band from New York. It was more of a like an indie rock thing, but just you know making contacts and and learning the business, learning that side of the business. Um, that's what I did for uh, you know five years. But being at home, 
I guess there's something in the back of you, you know, in the back of your mind that, you know, needs to be fed, right. uh, you know, as a performer. And so, you know, I was always writing during that time and I just, I had, you know, a bunch of songs and I was just getting a lot of encouragement from people that were hearing them like, man, you should really get back out there. And living right now until we turn around. Now it's time for our weekly songwriter tip. This week we sit down with hit writer Jaron Johnston as he talks about networking with other writers. It's tough getting in those circles where you know you get to get in the rooms with people that are making stuff happen. Um, I would just write as much as I can or as you can, uh, you know, twice, three times a day with anybody you can, and then every time you go in, learn something from that write, like from that writer, it, whether it's something to do or not to do or that's annoying, you know, or something like, um, or makes the session go quicker if they've got something they do that you're just like, wow, that was really great. Steal it, you know what I mean? Steal their moves and make them your own and take them into the next session and it's only gonna get easier. And, uh, and the more people, you write, more people you write with, somebody's gonna get hot, somebody's gonna get in there. Maybe you, maybe the guy that you're writing with, um, but that's, that's why it's important to write as much as you can. I wouldn't, for years I didn't say no to anybody. I would get in there and just, you know, eight in the morning, eight at night, ten at night, twelve at night, get some beers, go for it, you know what I mean? So, uh, write, write as much as you can. For more information on the craft of songwriting, check out NashvilleSongwriters.com. That's about all the time we have for this week's show, but don't forget those all things new discs we have up for grabs from Gordon Moat. Enter this week's drawing online only at InsideMusicRow.com. You can also check out each of our episodes online at Zeus.com slash InsideMusicRow. Make sure to check out the latest music videos in any genre while you're there too. We're going to leave you today with that new video from Kelly Pickler. Here is some Someone somewhere tonight. Until next time, I'm Bailey for Inside Music Row, and I'll see you again real soon.